morning, brethren. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, we like just to eat. <laughs> Thanks to our Heavenly Father for giving us another uh, opportunity and the strength to converge here on a Sabbath day like this to sing praises to Him, to hear the word of encouragement, and uh, you know to obey our God. Because this is a day that he has set apart for us to um, observe and keep it holy. So today I want to look at a title that says Overcoming Our Midnight. Overcoming Our Midnight. Our midnight refers to um, those times in our life that we face certain challenges that, so, that put us in a state of pain and uh, we feel that the morning will not come. And um, this is what each and every one of us go through sometime in our life. And this is not something that is unusual. It's something that we will see at a time in our life. And uh, what matters is not if we had this moment come, but what we do when this moment comes is what makes us God's people. And what gives us, shows that we have the understanding of the Bible that we read. I want to take us to the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 6, from verse 16. The book of Acts 16. This happened to uh, Paul and Silas. I'll start from 15. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be, uh, to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sweet saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the ruler and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent up their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jealous to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in a stock. So, you see what happened with um, the, the gospel that we preach. The gospel we preach has a word of hope, word of deliverance. But on the other hand, it's offensive to the demoniac world. It's offensive to, to Satan and his cohorts. And when we step on their toes, if God will open our eyes to see how many toes we step on spiritually, every day by day when we preach the gospel, when we do the writing, when we try to order our steps according to the word of God, then you know the devil is offended at us. And the devil, when they are offended, the devil, when he is offended, he and his agents, they don't sit down and watch us. They fight back at us. They fight back at us just like what happened here. And when they fight back at us, they get to us through physical mediums, like humor, disease, 
They get to us as a church by dividing the church. So many ways that we feel the, 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 the pain that the devil inflicts on us when they fight back. So this is one of the uh, consequences of the word that we preach. The devil is not happy with us and the devil fights back. And when they fight back, we find ourselves in situations that are not pleasant, like diseases that the doctors do not have cure for. They can only maintain it. We find ourselves in some financial conditions that we will be saying, when do we come out of this? But when we are in this kind of situation, just like Paul and Silas, look at what they did. Do we remember to do exactly what Paul and Silas did? I stopped at um, 24. 24. Okay, 24. So if you go to 25, it says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's hand were loose. So Paul and Silas, they, 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 they knew the source of their problem. They knew these problems, the, the trouble they faced. The source was not the magistrate. It was not the businessman. The source was directly from the devil. And they knew that this was not a time for them to begin to complain or renounce what they believe or regret their actions, their good actions. But they realized that this was a time for them to turn back to God and fight back and hit the source. And they had to pray. They prayed and they sang to God. This is what we have to do in the darkest moment of our time. When we have troubles trying to swallow us, no matter how deep that trouble is, like these people, they put them in the innermost part of the prison with chains in their legs. But they prayed and called on God for help. How did they get into this trouble? Because they did the right thing. What we do every day by day, keeping the Sabbath, loving our neighbors, preaching the good news of the gospel of God, of, of Jesus Christ. That was what they did. And they found themselves into this kind of trouble. But Paul and Silas did not complain. Paul and Silas did not regret their action. They went ahead to pray to God for help. Prayer and songs is what unites us most times. Because even as we are seated here, we have different beliefs in our mind. Even though this church has uh, some beliefs, things that we are supposed to believe, but different people here have different things they think this is right or this is wrong. But we all believe that we can pray. We all believe that we can sing. So this is a uni these are unifying factors that unifies us as God's people. And they used it, and they prayed, and they received the keys to the prison doors the real keys to the prison doors, and the prison doors were opened. Let's see the rationale behind what they did, so that when we find ourselves in, in the same situation, we'll be able to do the right thing. If you go to Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. This is the rationale behind what they did. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So when we, when we find ourselves in situations like that, it's not time to, uh, um, to begin to lay blame. We have to realize that we are at war with the dark world, and we have to do the right thing. And the right thing is to go on our knees and call on God. Not one minute prayer. Not a prayer we pray when we, are, when we are in a hurry to go to somewhere. We have to give God time and we have to call on God. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Second Corinthians 10 by 4 says, For the weapon of our welfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we don't fight with guns. We don't fight with matches. We don't fight with cutlass. We fight with the word of our mouth, with the word of God. That is how we overcome. That is how we win our battle. So let's remember, let's remember to pray at that time when it's as if it's so dark that the morning will not come. At that time when we feel so overwhelmed by trouble, let us remember that prayer is the key. The prayer that Paul and Silas made that gave them the keys to the prisons. If we pray the same prayers today, God will give us the keys to all that trouble us. Our marriage, our job, our health, the church, whatsoever it is. God can give us the key to the unity of the church. God can give us the keys to the peace in our families. God can give us the keys to every challenge that we are going through, how to overcome. And I want to also acknowledge that all the problems that we face, they are not from the devil. Sometimes God afflicts us. Sometimes God afflicts us when we sin against God. When God wants us to do something and we refuse to do it. Like the case of Jonah. God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh to save that country. To send the good news to them and save that country. But Jonah refused. God prepared a fish that swallowed Jonah. But right inside the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed and called on God. So it doesn't matter the source of the affliction. It doesn't matter the source of the problem. Prayer is the way out. And we have to learn this. Whether it's from God or it's from the devil, prayer is the way out. The Bible said that Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish. It's so difficult for us to see a trouble like that today. Right inside the belly of the fish. Where digestion takes place. Jonah prayed from there. And God heard him and delivered him. So, brethren, we can overcome everything that we go through. We can come out of it. We can overcome whatsoever the devil threw at us. Even with the current situation in the world right now, the pandemic that is affecting the church and affecting the ordinary people that are not church members, we can overcome. But we have to do the right thing. And the right thing is to pray and call on God. When we pray alone, our prayer is effective. But our, prayer, our prayers are more effective when we can pray with one another. When we can join hands with one another and call on God for help. God hears us. And God sends us the keys to every problem that we face. I want to take us to the book of Ephesians, the last scripture that I read today. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have to be strong in the Lord. We have to be strong in what we believe. We have to hold it very strong. No matter what happens, we have to remember to call on God. That is how we can overcome our midnights. That is how we can overcome our troubles. That is how we can overcome the darkest moments of our life when Satan wants to get back at us because of the work we do. Even when God afflicts us because of our sin, the only way out is to go on our knees. Because when we kneel down, it's a sign of humility and pray to God and ask for help and rescue. On your own, on your own time, you can go to the book of Psalm chapter 68 verse 1. It's a prayer of David that call on God to arise and let his enemies be scattered. So brethren, I want to encourage us, don't throw your prayer, uh, praying life away. Always remember, remember, no matter the situation, whether it's like, it was, it's like that of uh, Paul and Silas deep in the prison, or Jonah right 
they are in the belly of the fish. No matter the situation, no matter how bad it is, we can still pray and God can still hear and save us. Amen. Amen. Amen.